one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. Testing one two, one two, one two, testing one two, testing one two, one two, one two. Testing one two, testing one two, one two, three, four, one two, one two, three, four. But is that one quite loud? Okay, that's interesting. It seems like this is quite loud and the other one was quiet. I might be able to... That's interesting. I know what to do, I think. Testing, one, two, one, two. Oh, I've got... No, it's loud now. Okay, so I'll turn it down a bit. I don't know what happened. Testing, one... Oh! Uh, you know what it was? I had that turned off and I killed both of the mics. Testing, one, two... Testing one two one two. So I'll just check again if that's too loud. Testing one two one two three four. Is that will that be peaking? Will that be too much? It's peaking and it sounds pretty disturbing. Let's go down. Let's go down. One two, one two three four. One two, one two three one one one. Go up. One two. Go down there. One two. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. One, two. Like a louder sound. All right. Heidelberg have opened the scoring. One nil to the Burgers. And St. Albans, they have come to Olympic Village and planted their flag in the ground. Okay, and the players are out on the park for the start of this one. It's round eight in NPL Victoria. Is that all right? Yep. Just try and get this in the right spot. In the right spot. One, yeah, there, down there, down there, down, just down there. Yep.
played against India. And the 2-1 win. Huge. Thank you. Testing, testing. The wait is over, a brief pause for the fourth round of the Australian Cup qualifiers and NPL Victoria men's returns with a bumper evening of Friday night football. Thanks for joining us on the NPL Victoria live stream from Olympic Village in Heidelberg West. John Anastasiadis' Heidelberg United have got the season off to a rocking start, but the last month has seen them held to three consecutive draws in succession of fixtures against highly rated opponents. Still unbeaten this year in all competitions, the Burgers will look to get back on the winners list tonight. Meanwhile, Ryan McGuffey and Albans make the trip across from Melbourne's Northwest in winning form, claiming their second league win on home turf last start against a 10-man Manning United Blues. Tonight they commence a difficult period of six consecutive away fixtures where points are expected to be at a premium. My name is Steve Curtin. Pleasure as always to be bringing you the action and alongside me tonight. It's a very good evening to you, Neil Simons. Good evening, Stephen. NPL Victoria is back 
Uh, very excited for this match this evening. And you know what? It's great. Daylight Savings is coming in this weekend. Uh, so the lack of Daylight Savings, should I say. And uh, we're greeted to a picturesque night sky in the MPL Victoria. No more sun, no more daylight at the start of the kickoffs. All night time now. And it's very fitting that these two sides will go to battle uh, at this picturesque Olympic Village. And I must say, Stephen, Heidelberg United, I think they're back. A buzzing crowd tonight. Impossible get, to get a park. A nightmare for the spectators, but a delight for Victorian football fans. And as you mentioned that, Neil, we are very much, uh, very much amongst the crowd up here in the grandstand. So apologies if we do have any spectators walking past. We've got Sam behind the camera for Sportscast Australia doing his best to give you the best look at the action from our broadcast position supplied to us here tonight. The starting 11s are in for both teams. One change for each side. Dom Feller drops to the bench from that side that Heidelberg had a uh, nil-nil draw last league start against Avondale in that match played out at Hume City. So that sees Yaron Sosa resuming in goal. The back four, Jamal Ali, Ben Collins, Aidan Feder hudjic and Dion Nicolaitis. Anthony Lesiotis will resume at the base of midfield with Mo Adara and Kane Shepard dropping back into that number 10 position. Out wide, Leo Mazes and Nicholas Olsen is being passed fit to play and Josh Pinn returns into the starting 11 after a brief injury delay. Our injury spell, should I say, and St Albans as James Riccobeni sending the first long ball in anger. They're playing to the left of your screen at home, the southern end, the Murray Road end of this pitch and it's in excellent condition out here as well and we'll get to that Line up for St Albans in just a moment as Heidelberg look to make the first dangerous attack. Cade Shepard, as we mentioned, he enjoys that role playing in behind the striker and there he was there trying to supply that key pass, Neil. But just quickly, Joey Kalina is out of the squad for St Albans. Zelfi Nazari returning from international duty with the Afghan team who were in winning form in the international window. And uh, we see Marco Bullich resuming in goal, the back four. Nicholas Shiongo, Christopher Dibb, James Riccobeni and Joey Monek in midfield. As we mentioned, Zelfi Nazari resuming alongside Brian Summerskill. Scott Bakor was playing up the left-hand side and Ivan Radicevic on the right-hand side of midfield in attack. Last week's, one of last week's goal scorers, Alan Herez and the youngster, Josh Divin, looking to get amongst the goals tonight, Neil. Yes, yeah, St. Albans, a very rejuvenated side under Ryan McGuffey. A lot of personnel change in the off-season. Of course, we do see on the ball now James Rickabean. What else is there to say about James Rickabean? I think we can call him an Avondale legend. Of course, a part of that Absolutely. 2023 MPL Victoria Championship winning side. That's actually the first time he returns to the, the Olympic Village since that victory over South Melbourne last season. But swapping the blue of Avondale for the fairly darker shade of St. Albans, as we do see now on this left-hand channel, Dion Nicolaitis. The options in the middle. Josh Pin, one of them. Vidahajic now to Ben Collins. Looking across to Jamal Ali. Of course, went off with an injury scare a few weeks ago against Avondale, but back and ready. Shepard with a beautiful ball towards Josh Pin. He's one on one with Marco Bulic, who makes an excellent save. But then to follow it up is Leo Muzzis. Oh, that didn't take long. A heroic start for Muzzis who gets on the score sheet at home. And that means a lot to them. Yaron Sosa coming all the way from his goalkeeper box to celebrate with the team. And John Anastasiades' men could not have hoped for a better start. Leo Mazes in the right place at the right time, finishing home. And a bullet to the heart of St. Albans fans. Well, once again, Kane Shepard, he just can't afford to give him space to bring the ball forward in that number 10, that playmaker role, supplying a nice little diagonal pass to the returning player returning from injury, Josh Pinn. Good save initially by Bullich, but there was nothing you could do to keep out the shot from Leo Mazis, who fizzed that one into the net. Fine finish from him, getting in the right place at the right time. Leo Mazis to nab his first league goal of the season. But he was, uh, he was on target last weekend in the cup win against Sunbury United, Neil, in which they uh, had an 8-0 win. So, found his scoring boots in the cup and bringing them into the league. That's good to see for Leo Mazes, who's impressed since making the move from George Andrews so far this season for me. Would you agree, Neil? Leo Mazes is one of the most entertaining players in the competition. Tricky feet, and when you have your apprenticeship with the likes of Balcolin United, and also Celtic, let's not forget he was uh, at the club 
uh, when Brendan Rodgers was there alongside Tommy Rogic. Uh, hasn't had the best of runs in recent seasons, but uh, with this form, uh, A-League club should be on notice. Of course, had several trials with the Wanderers and Adelaide United in seasons gone by, and is another Canberra prospect. But maybe Canberra United, the A-League side, should have a look at him. Who knows if that side even comes to fruition, but nonetheless, Leo Maz is providing plenty of uh, transitional phase of play on that left-hand channel. Well, let's hope it certainly does come into fruition in a, a national league team in the nation's capital. Well, perhaps if the call-up doesn't come from there, maybe it will come from Brendan Rodgers getting back on the phone again, Neil. Maybe, maybe. But, uh, yeah, of course, uh, Leo Maz is, of course, has also played a bit of football in, in Spain as well. Italy, COVID has sort of ruined that in, in some parts, with, was obviously with uh, Palencia, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. But, nonetheless, had a bit of injury troubles last season. But good to see him in full full flight at the village. Now it's towards Rickabeen. Looks left. The option, Nazari. Now Bacor. Back to goal, of course, arrived from England this off-season. Locked the ball over the top. Looking towards that left-hand channel was Alan Jerez. Excellent defending from Jamal Ali. He's able to skip past the Argentine. Olsen. Good to see him back in the starting 11. Of course, a very, very scary injury two weeks ago uh, at Hume City Stadium. Of course, at the 0-0 draw against Avondale, which was actually stopped late in the uh, 85th minute. Could have been way, way worse. Of course, I was after, had to go to hospital through, a, through an ambulance, but what's a positive sign is that for St. Albans as well, and also Altona Magic. Uh, Altona Magic, of course, had uh, Liam O'Driscoll, who was... Uh, forced to enter an ambulance as well against uh, the Opie Cannons and he's also made a quick recovery so positive signs nonetheless. Yeah not good to see games ending prematurely but certainly good to see all precautions are being taken for head injuries these days as Ali fires that ball in oh it's only half cleared falls to pin slid in his chance for a second already Shepard on the turn and St Albans are in all sorts here Heidelberg are on fire at Olympic Village the back-to-goal specialist. Kane Shepard delivers for the Burgers. Such an outstanding player when he's in score scoring form. Got one against the Sharkies a few weeks ago. And that's a sumptuous finishing. Well, watch that one again on your replay. A couple of uh, backwards taps on the left-hand side of your phone screen if you're watching on home to go back and see. Check out that first touch by Kane Shepard there. As you mentioned, Neil, with his back-to-goal, he swiveled, turned on a sixpence, and then made the finish look oh so easy. And he is a player who is well and truly enjoying his football in, well, is it, I don't know if it's a renaissance in his career, if he's old enough to be calling it a renaissance. Um, he may or may not appreciate that coming from us, but I'll tell you what, he's playing damn well at the moment. And St Albans have really got an uphill task, finding themselves on the road. So you mentioned this is the first of six consecutive away league fixtures for St Albans. Neil, points will be at a premium. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Churchill Reserve is quite the deck. It's uh, slanted here and there. Uh, the home side, of course, very knowledgeable as to where the ball will bounce. And Ali with a great ball down the line, but Josh Pinn was unable to reach that pass. The slightly over here. But as, as I mentioned, of course, Churchill Reserve is, dare I say, a bit of a fortress. If you're a home side there, you know how to play uh, and, and anticipate the phases of play, where the ball's going to bounce. The village, different story. Fantastic pitch. You know when you have line markings in the NPL Victoria? <laughs> It's a very good thing. And the, the grounds people have done a fantastic job on this deck. And for Heidelberg United, not Najana and Anastasiadis, it's really just a match made in heaven. And <laughs> two goals in the first five minutes or so, you can't really complain if you're a, if you're a Burgers fan and the vibrancy is back around the club. The hill is being populated by supporters. That's how you know that Heidelberg United are well and truly getting their mojo back. Sumptuous ball over the top. Towards that left-hand channel, Scott Bacall. Racing past the byline, Jamal Ali with the timely interception, but Bacor got the final touch, and it'll be towards Yaron Souza. Of course, Heidelberg United, a few troubles in recent seasons. Didn't make finals last campaign. George Katsakis, the part of the club, has since uh, made a managerial appointment at the Bentley Greens, but John Anastasiadis, a statement appointment, and they were playing some good football to start the season. We hadn't really seen them deliver killer blows. Many people have said that there's an asterisk on, asterisk on their results to start the campaign, but this is a statement 
of intent from the Burgers as Muzz sees it out for a corner. Well, some of the stats very impressive so far. They have the best defence, equal best defence with uh, South Melbourne. Scored in all of their home games so far this season. And, uh, well, as the result stands, they could be finishing this evening in second place of the table, unbeaten in their first eight games in the league. As we mentioned, uh, speaking of eight, an 8 nil win in the Cup last week over Sundry United. So certainly some chance for uh, players to get their confidence up. Josh Pinn scoring a hat-trick in that one. In comes the in-swinging corner. Oh, it's a little bit long. And it runs harmlessly out of play in the end. Also, uh, you mentioned John Anastasiadis, also his assistant. They picked up Savas Patikas as well. He did some good work with uh, El Tona a couple of seasons ago on a fairly tight budget as well. Those guys are doing fantastic things so far this season. That's why the crowd is back in numbers. We mentioned uh, earlier in the season, I heard an interview with John Anastasiadis, and he remembers the days of coming here, and there might be six, seven, eight thousand 8,000 people for a league game. Um, you know, we might not see those days return in the foreseeable future, but we certainly might end up seeing maybe three, four, five thousand people here on the regular. Uh, so clearance by Sosa. This guy's high in the sky. Jamal Ali. He controlled that really well. Alessi Otis, who's started the season slowly and come back into the starting 11. He's really good last week in the match against uh, Avondale or a fortnight ago, should I say, before the Easter break. Here's Jamal Ali. As we mentioned, he went off, looked in a lot of pain and discomfort in the second half of that nil-nil against Avondale. But it's great to see him back out there, Jamal Ali. He's one of the real excitement machines of NPL Victoria, whatever club he's winding up at. And one of those players that if things had fallen slightly differently, we may have even seen him playing at a higher level, perhaps in the A-League. But his chance still may come. This is ben Collins. Now Adara. Playing in slightly deeper role in midfield tonight to accommodate Kane Shepherd dropping into the midfield three from that attacking position and Tom Feller dropping out of that team. And his pin again right on the shoulder of the last man. Would that have been onside or offside? We'll probably never know. His Monek, as the Saints have consistently done so far, playing up the left hand side, back or force go all the way back. May he have been fouled? He has, according to match referee. Max Hanlon. Good to have a chat with Max before the game. He's excited for this one. And he's, uh, well, he's witnessed a couple of sumptuous goals from all well, the referees. They have the best seats in the house. That's for sure, right out there amongst the action. Here's Shepard. You can see those orange boots chasing the ball back. We'll get to those subs quickly, Neil, for Heidelberg United tonight. Dom Faller, Johnny Apostolopoulos, Anthony Theodoropoulos, Sean Alice, Ryan Govan, and a return to the bench for Adrian Zara. And for the Saints, it's Yasko Karanovic, Adam Hodor, Michael Gergic, Carter Ramsey, Nicholas Mori, the youngster from South Shepparton, and another youngster on the bench, Max King. Not the 202 centimetres that killed a Ruckman. <laughs> well, still in play there. All the players seem to stop for a moment, Neil. <laughs> Absolutely so. When you hear the Alexandrios chants. Let our effects mics do the talking. <laughs> exactly. Music to your ears. Jerez. Ricka Bean. Now Zolfi Nazari, of course, a, a win for him in the international break against India and in the World Cup qualifiers. Started alongside Ramon Akbari, who did get on the score sheet. The former Brisbane Raw midfielder. Happy to play out of the back. St. Albans, of course, changing goalkeeping for the season. Jasko Karanovic has uh, dropped out. Michael Bulic taking the sticks. He's basically got two number ones competing for position now, which is very intriguing. This cue from Bakor down towards that right-hand channel, racing forward as Strongo. It's got space opening up in the middle. It's well dealt with by Fedhajic. Now Shepard. A little first touch to find Idara. Was named midweek as one of the more talented players in the NPL Victoria by Max Mikula, one of the hardest players to play against. He was just mesmerized by his technical quality and I think one of the more underrated players in the competition. He's played at a very high level in the uh, Belgian Pro League, of course, with Wutron and among others. 
and uh, really has been the creative fulcrum of this Harderberg United midfield. But Hajik, line splitting pass to find Kane Shepard. He's got options to his left. Mazes is the intended target. Good defending by Chongo to see it out for a corner. Looking forward to watching that contest between Nelson Chongo and Leo Mazes on the far side there. I could obviously say that Leo Mazes is one up at the moment with his early goal, but two players with plenty of pace. Absolutely so, and Chongo, of course, making a bit of a step up from North Geelong. Of course, they were in the NPL Victoria last season, but had a pretty storied career in Western Australia as well, with the likes of Balcata and Florida Athena. Mazes will go short. Idara, the intended target. Look, the fashion one, but his touch is slightly too far away from him. Nicker Ladies is going to have to retrieve. Not the best corner kick routine I've seen this season. <laughs> In the center circle. Back towards Nicker Ladies. He would dream for moments like these. A packed Olympic village came through the Heidelberg United Youth System. Started training with the first team at the age of around 15, 16. So, fulfilling his dream now. The young fullback. Marco Bullich. Look at Bean. Ryan McGuffey's men looking to slow the tempo. They have to do so in this uh, current state of play. Two goal buffer for the Burgers and so they're odds on to just maintain that le level of intensity as the game continues to subside. Are you a fan of the uh, all salmon goalkeeper kit that Marco Bullich is wearing tonight, Neil? Let's ask what Alex Salmon thinks about that. But uh, I'd say it was a Salmon, maybe like light pink, I'm not sure. But very intriguing to see, obviously, Marco Bullich in, in St. Albans. Colours, of course, was actually signed by the Port Melbourne Sharks in pre-season, but made the switch across to Dinamo. Spence, last season with Southern Sharks in the NPL New South Wales. So that's certainly not a path that many Victorians do take. Uh, not the only player to sign for, well, multiple clubs in an off-season in NPL Victoria history as well. But I'll tell you what I am impressed by is St. Albans wearing the blue kit. Uh, it's a striking number, and the numbers are much easier to read than that grey-on-grey -grey away kit that I saw them wear in their uh, nil-nil result, their opening match of the season against uh, the Port Melbourne Sharks at JL Murphy. Excellent turn from Josh Pinn. Looks like Leach Mazes has to turn back and find central options in Lesiotis. His pass is slightly overhit. Well, it's a bit of a plus for St. Albans. It's a couple of times where they've forced Heidelberg into making that error over on that far side of the pitch. Just getting a lot of numbers and trying to close down the spaces and just keep the pressure on this Heidelberg side that looks like they're coasting out there at the moment with this 2-0 lead. Leo Marzis and Kane Shepard, the scorers, if you have just joined us. Mainly into the 17th minute. It feels like some time ago when they went 2-0 up as well with that goal by Kane Shepard. After Mazes had opened the scoring on about two minutes. Mazes now. Nikolaitis, Fedajic. Well travelled player, Hayden Fedahajic, of course, the likes of Lions FC, Olympic, South Melbourne, Kingston City, but very much at home, but Heidelberg United, the ladies, attempting a line splitting pass down that left hand touch line. Has to play back to Yaron Souza. Large reason for that fantastic defensive record, of course, arriving across from the likes of the Central Coast Mariners. A brilliant touch from Kane Shepard. Looks to unleash. Darting Jamal Ali. He's going to make his way into the penalty area. Ali across the face of goal, but it's well contended by Dinamo. And then this left hand channel is Bacor. Look at a cross past halfway, but short is Jerez now. Nazari. Jerez in space. He's got players upfield, but. Might have been the wrong option there, Neil. Uh, Scott McCall was making that good run. Unmarked as well, coming in from the left-hand side. Just 
mentioning to his St Albans teammate there. I would the mind of that one played out in the channel in front of me. But at least St Albans they're starting to try, starting to get closer to at least asking some questions of that Heidelberg defence that looks so settled. Fena Hajic and Ben Collins, a really formidable central defensive pairing. As we mentioned, they're you know they're level with uh, South Melbourne on goals conceded, and that's no mean feat. And here's that man Collins, plenty of experience with Western United, and he's brought that to Olympic Village and tried to improve his game even more. Fena Hajic looking for that direct ball, and the flag stays down here for Josh Pin. He's going to go on the tight angle and score as well. Olsen was making the run to the back post. But Josh Pinn didn't need him. Heidelberg on fire. St Albans in disarray at the village. It's 3-0. Despite how well Heidelberg United have started this season, few could predict this. An absolute travesty for St Albans in terms of their defensive solidity. But watch out MPL Victoria. The Burgers are coming and coming with an almighty vengeance. Josh Pinn continuing his goal-scoring form. Slight injury troubles in recent weeks, but that doesn't stop the pin from dropping here at the Olympic Village. Three attacking players, Marzis, Shepard, Pinn, to open a scoring. We haven't even hit 20 minutes yet. Well, Marco Bullic beaten from the tight angle there, watching the replay. He looks absolutely bemused as to how that's gotten through his defences. There wasn't a lot of net to aim at. It was from very close range. Josh Pinn didn't need any assistance whatsoever. As we mentioned, he was certainly in goal-scoring form in the Cup during the week. Scored a hat-trick, or should I say last weekend. Scored a hat-trick in the Cup competition in that 8-0 win. Picking up where he left off. So two of those goal-scorers tonight... In fact, pardon me, all three of the goal scorers tonight did score in that cup win. What have St. Albans got to try and offer a reply here? Arazimic floats the ball in from the half space, well away by Jamal Ali. Brought down by Divin oh, on the turn. Not a bad effort from the youngster who cuts an imposing figure out there. Brought that down well. Good contact on it. And it came off. No Heidelberg league and out for the corner. So perhaps a chance for St. Albans to try and conjure something up here from the set piece. And my word, do they need it. They're having the night from hell at the moment on their trip across from Melbourne's northwest to Heidelberg West tonight. And yeah, Josh Pinn, this fourth of the season, hasn't scored in nearly a month or scored that stunning goal against South Melbourne about four weeks ago. St. Albans reply here. It's towards the centre. Better Hodge is dealing with that one. It was Aaron Sosa didn't come to try and claim or affect a spoil. Decent ball in by the Argentine Alan Herez. He's going to follow it up with the corner from the far side now. From left to right. On the, on the Northland side of the stadium. At the Suvlaki GR stand, Stephen. <laughs> I can't see any plumes of smoke coming out of that stand. I feel like the rotisserie is not in action, but we'll, we'll, we'll check it out at halftime just in case. Ball aimed in at Divin. Back out to Herez. Low ball in. Oh, it's all Heidelberg there. Feta Hajic, calm and composed. Lesiotis. Adara. Little triangles as they play out from their own six-yard box. The team is high on confidence. Pin's going to be on a foot race with Nazari. Uh, there's a foul on play. Max Hanlon spotted that one, and he's a late tackle suffered by, it looks like, Feta Hajic back there. So we'll have a slight delay in play here. As we mentioned, Max Hanlon, our man in the middle tonight. Assistant referees tonight, Didak Lee and Luke Giannimatis. Pascalis Natas is the fourth official, keeping an eye on things over on the far side. Or as Neil mentioned, the Suvalaki GR side of the venue, or Northland, if you like. Yeah, I think it's a good time to go around the grounds. Of course, we've got three matches in the top flight in action this evening. 
Oakley Cannons currently locked at nil-nil with Port Melbourne and Dan Nog City locked at nil-nil with Green Gully and Paul's Burgers with a very keen eye on the Cannons and the Sharks. Of course, Cannons with a draw on Monday against the Dan Nog Thunder, that replay of that round five fixture. So a quick turnaround for them. Monek. Poor giveaway by St. Albans. It's one back by Aydara. Hudjic. Nicolaitis. Back to goal is Josh Pinn. Mars is appealing for it on that left-hand touch line. Berg is looking to dictate tempo. Collins. Ali. Pass running out of play, of course, Jamal Ali. Fantastic start, start to the season for him, of course, formerly of the likes of Moreland City, the Mariners Youth Academy, the Thunder, Altona Magic. Well travelled, but certainly in career best form here at the village. Asiotis. Muzzers coming into a more central position. Dinamo with a flat back five out of possession. I don't want the onslaught to continue. Olsen, beautiful ball in behind. It's Mo Aydara. Oh. It will be a Heidelberg throw. Chris Dib holding his ground there, and he had to. Really good run in from Mo Aydara, making the run, trying to come in beyond his number nine through the space there, and fired away. Fearsome shot, well blocked away. Ricky Bene. Trying to find Bacor. He found him, but he couldn't get past that man we just mentioned, Aydara. Here he is again. Well, Aydara having a ripping game already in the early stages of this one. So right, as you mentioned earlier, Neil, one of the more underrated players in the competition. He's been a standout for me since he joined Altona Magic, scoring at this ground in his first season for the Magic against Holderberg United. Maybe that's how he was brought to the attention <laughs> of the Burgers ended up playing football here and he's just going from strength to strength at the moment covers so much territory as we see there again, excellent first touch Adara and here's Shepard he's, as we said, really enjoying the return of Josh Pin into that number 9 position allowing Shepard the freedom to float around in behind the striker and here's a chance for Olsen he'll be wondering he can get in on the scoring act as well soon. Everyone else in the front four has so far. Olsen twisting and turning, just drawing the foul there perhaps, and he's done well to do so. In a dangerous position too. Scott Bacour, the Englishman, just left a foot in on Nicholas Olsen there. And as we mentioned earlier, it's just great to see him playing football again. Just 13 days ago that accident happened on the Saturday night the round before Easter. Yeah, truly remarkable. Uh, it looked to be something of a neck injury. They had a neck brace on at the time. Very scary scenes at Hume City Stadium. But fortunately for him, he's back in action and looks to be back to his best. We'll see Nick Olsen fashion one on his left foot on the right edge of the penalty area. Might fancy himself to try his luck from a direct shot here, even Neil. <laughs> Michael Bullet just towards his back post. So you never know. Better Hadjic. Van Collins, the tall timber, Kane Shepard there too as well. Max Hanlon will blow his whistle and the set piece will come now. It's Olsen towards a back stick. There's a foul in possession. And uh, St. Normans will have a defensive reprieve now. It's back towards Bullich. Of course, spent time at the Melbourne Victory Academy as well. Was briefly the number three. Certainly the not the night he was hoping for, Marco Bullic so far. I mean, to pick the ball out of his net three times in the opening 20 minutes. St. Albans try and play their way out of defence here. Pin applying the press, and the Queenslander was coming in like a steam train on the cane fields of northern Queensland there to close down Marco Bullic. Foul on the halfway line here. Ben Collins not happy with the treatment he's received. Yeah, Ben Collins, a bit of a stride forward from the uh, centre-back on that occasion. Of course, has had experience. stay in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, has that experience with J.A. as well. We can't forget that. was under him 
at Western United when J.A. was an assistant coach. Switched across from the Melbourne Knights in the off-season. Hajik looks towards Leo Mazes. Looking to receive him board there, should I say. It was Nicolaitis with the initial pass. That's one back by the Burgers. Nicolaitis again. Will uh, be the one to throw this in. Let's see how this scoop with a one-two touch. Nicolaitis. Whistling and weaving his way through. It's Shepard. Short towards Aydara. Aydara finds up Ali on the overlap. Still striding forward. Jamal Ali in short. Aydara, nice little one-two touch. Towards the left channel. Mars is flicked into the box. It's Shepard. Scintillating football from Heidelberg United. Oh, Marco Bullich, grateful to receive that one in the midst. He's only made one save this evening prior to that, and it was... Deflected into the path of Leo Mars to open the scoring as well. Here's Heidelberg trying to come again. They want a fourth before half time. Here's Pin on the turn. Shepard in space. Nice little first time pass over the top. Adara is offside this time though. He knew it, but he was <laughs> he made a little step towards the ball after just uh, stopping in his track. So uh, he pretended he wasn't. He definitely was. <laughs> Absolutely so. Left for St. Albans now, of course. Uh, a good little victory at Churchill Reserve against uh, Manningham United several weeks ago. Marco Bullich, of course, has had a couple of good penalty saves in recent weeks as well. A big debt to the uh, to the confidence of this side under Ryan McGuffey. We've had a very intriguing offseason in terms of player recruitment. Haven't really brought in a, a star name. Haven't really looked the same since uh, George Ott, the part of the club, mid-season in 2023. Oof. Olsen. Towards a left hand channel. Attempt to switch. He's upended. Off the ball. Mazis. Nice letting himself on that left hand channel. Playing it short towards Lesiotis. Mazis goes to ground as well. Lesiotis with the ball into the box. It's towards the back stick. But Josh Pinn didn't know quite anything about it. Well, Josh Pinn was partially gambling on that one to come to him, but didn't fully commit to it, and he was kicking himself that he didn't. Finally, we do see the yellow card come out this time for Scott Bakor, who. Extended the olive branch to Nicholas Olsen after catching him very late after Olsen's delightful switch of play to that far side. And Nicholas Olsen wasn't uh, keen to receive the apologies though. and uh, So a little bit of animosity between Bakor and Olsen and Olsen not enjoying that treatment and uh, rightfully so we see Bakor become the first player to go into the book this afternoon for that, or this evening, should I say, for that late challenge. Yeah, Scott Bacor, intriguing re recruitment process from the St. Albans, of course. We've got another Englishman in the form of Brian Summerskill, but uh, Scott Bacor has quite the reputation. Spent some time with Curzon Ashton, Warrington, Wilton Albion. Curzon Ashton, of course, a fairly famous club for MPL Victoria players. Joe Indeed. Guest, and uh, Connor Hampson spent some time there as well. Funny how football works sometimes. Bullets is going to try <laughs> make a, a four out of his box, but is uh, upended by Josh Pinn. So he'll take the, the free kick. No other goals around the grounds of the MPL Victoria. Just the burgers. All the goals here, Neil. Three three <laughs> games in action. Three goals here. You don't need to be anywhere else. A little bit greedy, Heidelberg United. There's only so many goals to go around in the NPL Victoria, but Don Anastasiadis is uh, been very firm in his, in his approach, and by the 3 0 result, firmly justified as a little flick over the top. Back by St. Albans, they look to have some space on that right hand channel. Yeah, Razumic trying to get on the end of that one, and he does win the throw, so St. Albans at least getting themselves up the park. They've been pinned back in their own defensive third for. So much of this one. And it would certainly give their defenders a bit of a reprieve if they can have some play at the other end of the park, the southern end here, the city end of the Olympic Village. This pristine pitch. Here's Olsen. Inside to Adara. Ali, keen to get forward down the right-hand side. Hasn't really needed to because the men in front of him have been doing the business superbly so far in this one. Better Hajic. 
He always looks to go for that direct option if it's available. Josh Peanut made the run to come and get it at his feet, so that option wasn't on. So the patient approach. Here's Collins. Ali, the first time ball for Shepard, who may not have expected it to come to him there, but he's kept it in play. Oh, Scott Bacall left lamenting as Shepard goes cruising past. Ali, Monik to close him down. Adara, a couple of former Altona Magic players doing the business at the moment here at Olympic Village for the Burgers. Feder Hajic, Nikolaitis out in front of the St. Albans technical area. Mazes is offside here. Heidelberg in their transitional phase of play, very different to likes of Avondale, who I'd say is probably the most apt comparison in terms of their attacking switches and, and whatnot. But you can just tell that J.A. has drilled this system in. And it's also a system that's got a degree of tactical flexibility with it as well. And I think that's quite intriguing. And I think that's exactly what will keep them going this season beyond just the regular season, is that they have players to back it up on the bench. They've got experience in all, in all areas of the park, unlike the likes of, say, Avondale to an extent. Oakley Cannon's got a lot of youngsters that are doing quite well this season. But he's such a regimented coach like Dylan Anastasiadis. They've only got to experience more joy this campaign. And let's not forget, they're undefeated in the league this season as well. So space opening up. St. Albans with a pass over hit by Alan, Alan Jerez and he just punches the air in frustration. Uh, good idea from Alan Harris but couldn't find Razumich and this match was always going to be and as these matches are on this good surface it's always nice, a nice large wide pitch as well uh, a real midfield battle and you just wonder if the St. Albans side is just getting a touch overrun in the middle of the park by Lesiotis, Shepard and Adara in there and Perhaps maybe an extra man in midfield. Maybe a Max King could come on and try and mm. change things a little bit and uh, try and support Nazari and Summer School in there. And Summer School is so often the barometer for St. Albans. Uh, really haven't noticed him with his usual style and yeah. flair tonight at any stage for me, Neil. And perhaps an extra man in midfield could maybe release Summer School to be more creative. Let's not forget Brian Summer School was a former Heidelberg United player and hasn't really succeeded in the times in which he's returned to the village in, in recent seasons. It's sort of a trend that's continuing as now we do see play open up with summer skill ironically now. Finding options on that right hand channel. The former Ivan Razumich manages to keep it in. Clash of heads in the penalty area but Shepard will now win it out for the Burgers. Shongo, summer skill to turn away and yeah you can see it looks like two players on the deck is that Lesiotis for the Burgers yeah Anthony Lesiotis just seems to be in a bit of strife here might be Alan Herez back up on his feet I think is the player involved for St Albans but yeah we'll mention Brian Summerskill he must have heard us Neil because he got on the ball and tried to thread that <laughs> one through to his yeah. uh, right midfielder Ivan Razumich there but just playing that one with the outside of the right peg and uh, it was always curling away from the path of uh, it, it being running into a dangerous channel there and sort of forced Razumich a little bit too wide and killed the opportunity. But the more that they can get some skill on the ball, give themselves a chance to try and grab a goal before half time and get a bit of confidence going into the break that would make a world of difference at the moment with the score currently at 3-0. Here's Summerskill dropping deep to pick up the ball now, combining with Chris Dibb in the blue boots, trying to play a direct one over the top. It's not quite what the doctor ordered, though. Headed away by Feder Hajic. Nikolaitis' ball for Adara. An uncharacteristically heavy touch by Adara. And then the same by Summerskill. And no nonsense from Jamal Ali, who sends it all the way through to Marco Bullich. St. Albans, a little bit of possession here in the latter stages of this first half. Given away again by Summerskill. Yeah, let's see Otis back towards Collins. Almost done relatively well since the third goal was scored to keep their shape. Haven't afforded much space for the Burgers to exploit as Rickabine heads it back to Marco Bullich. He's short to summer skill. Well, 
Well, it's almost a bit of a lull over the stadium now, Neil. The fans have come here looking for action in an exciting game. They got probably a game's worth of excitement in the first 20 minutes. Now they're cruising, they're coasting, 3 nils. Pretty handy score, but a very comfortable score. Sort of gives a vibe of when uh, a team is sort of losing so many wickets. We'll go eight or nine down, and then that final stand just lasts that little bit longer. But credit to St Albans for keeping their composure and not losing sight of what they're currently faced with. Muzz is now in transition. He's got Shepard centrally. Leo Muzzers, pin. Shepard looks right for Nick Olsen. And his left foot looking to curl one! Oh, a boy, it's a great save. And towards the byline is Jamal Ali. First pass intercepted. Ali, you now like Dara, looked to venture into the same position Ali was about five seconds ago. Like Dara back to goal. It's forced in the corner flag now. Players just falling over and stacks on. Oh, Scott Bacor kicking oh, the ball. He's already on a yellow. And Jamal Ali involved there as well. A couple of afters, and this might be a second yellow for Scott Bacor. No, oh, he can't afford to be getting involved in this one, Scotty Bacor. Definitely venturing into a dangerous position here, the Englishman. And venting his frustrations as well. And the assistant on that near side got a very clear view at it. We'll see what the decision is from Max Hanlon. We said there was a bit of a lull over this one, and it's all just kicked off. Simmering down now. Will there be any further sanctions for the players involved here? And Scotty McCall will be feeling a touch nervous just for the next few moments until this, this, this situation is dealt with. Domino's falling in the, uh, in they the all corner just, oh, They just piled on top of each it's other. crazy. And uh, Scott McCall just trying to kick the ball out of it. Really similar to the likes of when, you know, when Eden Hazard kicked the ball point Swansea about uh, <laughs> 10 years ago. But uh, for his sake, you'll hope that there was no contact there with the player. I feel like we're going to maybe get away without any, yeah. any cards shown here, Neil, which is a little bit unusual. It's not often you see four or five players from each side choosing to tango. And Well, he might not. I mean, the... Is this a referee on the near side? I know Max Hamlin having a, having a chat together. Usually at least one player from each side perhaps might see a yellow in situations such as this. It's a lengthy chat still going between the assistant referee. We've got a goal around the grounds, Neil, that we can go to. Joe Guest has opened the scoring at the Cannons. And Jack Edwards reserve. Scott Bacor might be called here. He might be in trouble here, Neil. He might be in big trouble. And uh, Max Hanlon is asking for a player to come to him. Oh, he's not sure what the hole up is here. Yep, Mac, uh, yep Scott Bacor has been uh, singled over. Here. The teacher this is, is going to give a bit of a Orbans. warning to, uh, to one of the players on the pitch. Well, they had the benefit of playing against 10 in their last league outing. Christos Theodor Akopoulos was sent off before half-time and got the send-off from the St Albans fans. Will Scott Bacall get the same treatment from the Olympic Village here? Perhaps. Well, no, you just going to have a talking to. Second yellow. Scott Bacall is off. It's gone from bad to worse for St Albans. Their English import is off. After going 3 0 down in 20 minutes, they'll have to face... A very formidable Heidelberg side with 10. Wow, we really feel for Ryan McGuffey and his charges in situations like this. Not a lot you can do when you're already 3 0 down, especially when you go down to 10 men before half time against a team who's in red hot form like this Heidelberg side. Well, there you go. And it's a long and lonely march down to that tunnel over on that far side for Scott Dacor. He played a uh, all action and a high octane game on the left hand side of midfield so far. A late challenge earlier on Nicholas Olsen. And then more hostilities that we predicted might have come. And eventually he's off before the half time interval. Two needless yellow cards, let's be honest, Steve. I mean, 
the first one was easily avoidable. There's no need to play a sliding challenge on the halfway line in transition. The second one, also needless. Why are you kicking the ball in the corner? But uh, a dynamo disaster brewing here yeah. at the Olympic Especially, Village. Yeah, the first one, kind of see how it could happen. Definitely needless. The second one, if you're already on a yellow, you definitely just can't. You just cannot be engaging in situations like that when you know you're already on a yellow. As we said, the match officials are always looking to book at least one antagonist from each side in these sort of situations. I don't think anyone from the Burgers was actually booked there, Neil, No, for that altercation. No, it's just a simple the dominoes falling effect. So only two yellow cards shown so far tonight. Both of them to Scott Bacourt. St. Albans down to 10. Here's Feder Hajic. Nikolaitis getting forward. The young left back trying to Get around to Razumic. Here's Alessiotis trying his luck from distance. Well, the talented number six trying to get himself amongst the goals. And why not to from all of 30 yards out? That was maybe asking a bit much, but when it's that kind of night, you might as well have a pop. Yeah, it's him for the three players involved in that phase of play. Michael Bullitt with a good save. He's made three good saves, Steve, and I think it's a real testament to how good Heidelberg have been who have already scored three goals past the goalkeeper who's got quite good saving acumen. And has performed diligently well in the opportunities he's, he's been given this season, but just one of those nights. But very well could have been three, four or five on the basis of play based upon what we've seen from Heidelberg United. Collins. And Sionis, good first touch by Mazes. Oof. Too far beyond Kane Shepherd. A bit of good retreat by Mazes. Just not spotting Nick Olsen in time. Jerez. Good tracking back oh, from Oedara. He will have Fantastic three minutes work. of added time in that first half as well, Stephen. And, uh, Nick Olsen playing it back towards Oedara. He's got Ali to his right. Ventures forward to find Nick Olsen. A tug of the shirt. And a free kick. About 35 yards out from goal. Take it short, Olsen. Shepard back to goal. Olsen combining. Of course, a uh, pretty prestigious career across Asia for Nick Olsen. Most, re most recently spending time in Vietnam after a stint at the Brisbane Raw a few seasons ago. He played 20 odd games in the A League. I heard he enjoyed the V League in uh, Vietnam so much. He wanted to join the uh, the real uh, the top V League, and that's the NPL Victoria. And Absolutely, he's done well since moving across it. Brilliant line splitting pass from Anthony Lesiotis. It's Josh Pin, who's offside. Sumptuous finish into the top right corner. But St Albans holding their line very firm, and, uh, preventing it from being. 4-0 at half-time. Well, almost about time for the players to head down the tunnel for the half-time team talks. And well, we hope you're enjoying this match from wherever you're tuning in from. Steve Curtin alongside me, Neil Simons tonight. And if you're a Heidelberg fan, a fan of, well, of the new Heidelberg United era or the old Alexander days, I'll tell you what, the glory days are well and truly back here at Heidelberg United at the moment. and Albans. Down to 10. Pinned back in their own defensive third again. Here's Joey Monek, the left back to take the throw. Aiming at Josh Divin. The player that looking forward to seeing tonight, but St. Albans really haven't been able to get young Josh Divin into the game enough to show his wares too much so far. It'd be great to see him getting on the ball a bit more in the second half. Yeah. If he can get some supply. Yeah, Josh Divin's a very intriguing one, of course, actually from NPL Tasmania. South Hobart played as a teenager there. He's still in his teenage years now and, uh, to be honest, has performed diligently well in his first few games for the St. Albans Saints. Of course, spent time with Western United as well, but good to see some MPL Tasmania representation in the, in the top flight of Victoria. Here's Nazari. Oh, caught late there. And that might be about the last action of the first half. Unless the Otis coming in to close him down. The slightly heavy touch by Nazari drew in the tackle and 
foul took place, and that's all we're going to see for the first half of this one as the home fans are in full voice because it's a, well, a series, a succession of goals in the third, sixth, and 20th minute by Leo Mazis, Kane Shepard, and Joshua Pinn that sees Heidelberg United making a statement to the rest of NPL Victoria that they are the real deal, Neil. Absolutely so. Heidelberg United are showing St. Albans who's boss and those in attendance have bore witness to a shooting spectacle. We'll be back with you in 15 minutes or so for some more NPL Victoria action. Catch all the other games live and free on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel.
bench. From the bench in the last match as well, Neil. So perhaps he's just a couple of fitness issues that seeing he's limited at the moment, but he's certainly a player that they can use out there at the moment to shore up some defensive solidity, and he's looks to have slotted into a central defensive position. Yeah, Michael Gergic, a uh, very intriguing player in terms of his uh, both his defensive acumen and also his ability to get onto set pieces by virtue of free kicks. Did score one here last year at the Village. A very integral one at that. We do see Mazza's nip in behind. Gets a strike away towards the back post. Well, it fall for Nick Olsen. It doesn't. A slight miscue. And there will be a goal kick. But as I do say, yeah, Michael Gergic, a set piece machine. But he could get onto those set pieces at a within shooting distance. Of course, uh, former Melbourne North Geelong, but has been a St. Albans Saint so many years now. You really think of Michael Gergic when you talk about St. Albans, the embodiment of this football club in the heart of defence. Yeah, Mr. St. Albans, some might call him. And it looks like Christopher Gibb is the player who's been sacrificed at half time. Well, we thought Ryan McGuffey might make a change much had to. Hopefully it's not an injury to Chris Dib. Here's Adara Shepard and straight into the waiting hands of Marco Bulic. And you do see the gaps begin to open up in that defensive third for St. Albans. It is to be expected. A change in shape can only do so much when you're a player down. And uh, despite Scott Bacor being more of an attacking type player, they do have to really give up some of their defensive solidity they want to somehow crawl their way back into this contest I, I really doubt so but Shepard ball to feet into the area he's got space on his left to exploit and the lady stepping in it's back with Shepard dwells it towards Leslie Otis there's a nice dummy by Max Hanlon to allow that ball to run through to Kane Shepard a moment ago <laughs> as well Neil he might get a yeah. he might get a call up if uh, St Albans have any more players uh, marched off the park Ali, beautiful ball towards Idara. Is it off the arm of Summerskill? Oh. Max Hanlon points to the spot. Burgers will have an opportunity to go 4 0 up early on in this first half. Second half, should I say? Could it be deja vu for St. Albans? Well, they certainly started the first half like a house on fire, Neil, and we'll just catch this penalty decision on our replay screen here. Looks like a handball is the call against Brian Summerskill. Not a happy return to no. his former home ground today. And it will be Josh Pinn standing over this one. Marco's return to the Heidelberg starting lineup. It's that kind of night where all 11 players out there for Heidelberg would be putting their hand up to take this one. <laughs> Absolutely, and Josh Pinn an opportunity to extend his goal scoring form into this match. Got one in the first half. Can he deliver this time? Marco Bulic saved a penalty a few weeks ago. Can he turn provider once again? It's Josh Pinn from the spots. Yeah. Rifled down the middle. Heidelberg United's goal scoring form continues in the second half. And it's Josh Pinn again who can deliver in open play and also from the spot. Well, Josh Pitt with the hat-trick in the cup last weekend. He could be getting himself a hat-trick tonight as well, Neil. That was emphatic as you like, watching that one on the replay again. Bullich diving to his left, and it was just smashed into the roof of the net with such ferocity that had the net not been there, it would have cleared that old scoreboard behind the goal and gone over Southern Road into the Darabin Creek as well. That was hit like a rocket. Bullich with no chance. Heidelberg, 4-0. Josh Pinn. We do talk about Kane Shepard being a player reborn. Josh Pinn has certainly fit that description this season. Moving from a wide position centrally, one of the best players in the league to get in behind and can provide space both in transition and also from the penalty spot, as we've just seen this evening, Steve. Yeah, as we were saying, chatting at half time nearly, just for me, he stretches defences so well, he's always making those runs off the shoulder of the last man and he might get caught offside once or twice a game but really makes space in that in the hole for Kane Shepard to manoeuvre around and just try and create those little chances to bring players into the game. 
Payne Shepherd's having a great time out there in the, playing that role. But Joshua Pinn, he has to be enjoying himself, the Queenslander, playing in that number nine role. Just coming to the club as a pacey winger. Oh, a bit of trouble here. Pinn might be on. Shepherd. Oh, well blocked away, Nazari. Alan Herrez charging up that left hand side. John Anastasiadis urging his players to get back into defensive positions. Everyone wants to get forward and score goals. Here's Divin. Monix got forward from left back and that long forward run all to no avail as he's flagged for offside. That's a frustrating one for St Albans. Yeah. A rare breakaway for St Albans in the second half. I don't suspect they'll be getting too many of those attacks, but good defensive acumen and awareness to break away from Kane Shepard and Josh Pinn who were combined in that earlier phase of play. Could have very easily been five this early on in the, in the second half. Oh, it was made from that pressing as well by Holderberg's front man. Turnover in a dangerous position and uh, well, Pinn could have been forgiven for going himself as well to try and get that hat-trick as well. He played it across the face of the goal to try and find Moe Dar in the middle. Here's Jamal Ali. Peter Hajic looking for options up the left-hand side. Plenty of space in front of him. He's invited forward. Nikolaitis, two number 12s going at it. Nikolaitis and Razumic. Lasiotis. Plenty of time on the ball. He's a player that doesn't need much time on the ball as well. Anthony Lasiotis. Oh, that's a nice pass from Collins. Picks out Olsen. And he skips inside onto his right. Adara. Plenty of blue shirts back there. Lesiotis. Adara. Pressure from Perez, who's playing a bit of a deeper role to try and cover some of those defensive duties that the 10 men of St. Albans have been forced to try and shoulder the burden of. Adara, overlapping run, came from Ali, but Adara couldn't find him. It's out of play for a throw on the far side. Adara will leave it for Jamal Ali, of course, both formerly of the Magic. Taken long now towards Pin on the byline. Calls for offside are answered. It did cross the byline, I think, in the end. Yeah. I was a bit confused. I was like, <laughs> yeah. you can't, can't be offside from can't a throw. Be offside from a throw, but yeah, yeah, Josh Pin stepping out of play. Josh Pin letting it run too far. <laughs> One ball over the top, Lucy Dolphins. Well contended by Jamal Ali. Summer still now with space to exploit. One ball searching for Razumic, but it's all dealt with by Nicolaitis. Mars is dropping deep. That's the Otis. Centre circle is Idara. Collins. Ali. Hooking it down the line, but they had a break press. St. Albans and space opening up now for Nick Olsen. Isolating himself on that right-hand channel square towards Josh Pinn. Towards the left hand channel. Nicolaitis stepping inside, looking to curl one and it hits the right post. Well, that would have brought the house down. Aesthetically pleasing shot from Nicolaitis, but didn't quite find the corner. Play still in for Heidelberg United. It's back with Idara. It's towards Lasiotis. Shepard back to goal, but he's muscled off the ball. Well, he has just one senior league goal to his name for Heidelberg United. Dion Nicolaitis, that would have been some way to score his second. At that one curled in off the far post. Here's Joey Monet. One behind the ball for Heidelberg, except for Josh Pinn. Came forward at the man in green boots, which is Diffin, who got his head on the ball, but only succeeded in getting it out of play. Under close attention from Ben Collins. Alessi Otis and Adara, those two combining. Not for the first time tonight. Feta Hajic switching the play. Good first touch needed by Marzis. Brings it down well. Looks to get around Shongo. He tries luck at that far post area. Oh, it's still there for Heidelberg. Now away by Gergic, but cut out by Nikolaitis. Mazes plays it in. Shepard with the spectacular attempt, and it's in off the post. Fine, wow, we fine stuff from Kane Shepard. Nonchalant celebration. After flicking that one up and just steering into the corner, like a training drill for Kane Shepherd as he scores his second. A fifth for Heidelberg. 
And we've run out of superlatives for this Heidelberg United side deal. That is for sure the pick of the bunch from Kane Shepard. His third league goal of the season. Certainly his best. Picked it up from an improbable angle. And uh, rifled it into the top right corner. Bullich just watching it twirl over, over his head. Sumptuous finish from Heidelberg United. They have well and truly been on it. And you must say, they are odds on to get a few more. This is an absolute clinic from John Anastasiadis' man. He's put every team in the top six on notice. And it wasn't just after the red card that they've really sprung to life. It was before the red card as well. They maintain that consistency and intensity throughout the full 56 minutes of action so far. And Kane Shepard again. How fantastic has he been in that second striker role? Now, chance for Shongo. Galloping over the halfway line. Well, Razumich is the target. Well, we line. joked a short time ago, Neil, that perhaps Holderberg are going to start the second half in the same vein that they started the first. The first half, of course, they scored in the third and the sixth minute. Um, well, they've got two in the first ten minutes of the second half as well to make it five. And we're going to see John Johnny A go to the bench for the first time tonight. Looks like Kane Shepherd won't be recording a hat trick, unfortunately, for all the Kane Shepherd fans. Well, hang on, take that back. Is it <laughs> Pin going off? Yes, Josh Pin coming off. Sean well, that Ellison. must mean that Adrian Zara is coming on because yeah. uh, Shepherd removing the armband. So it well, seems as if uh, Adrian Zara is going to drop back into that right wing back position. Has been sort of newly found for the former Melbourne Heart man and a Sean Ellis as well. Him and Shepherd up top, the two all-time leading goal scorers in the NPL Victoria. And Shepard is going to chase Sean Ellis for that top spot very much soon. Shepard moving back up top. So he, well, just disregard what we said a moment ago. He is well and truly on for a chance to get his hat-trick tonight. But it will be Josh Pinn who will have to end with a brace. Yeah, Josh Pinn. Not a bad night at the office, though. Brilliant from the Queenslander. Less Just than an hour out there, and what a clinic he put on as well. Here's Leo Mazes, jinking inside, ball into the back post. Shepard is there, and Shepard does have his hat trick. Oh, who can stop this man? What a ball in by Mazes, and Shepard doesn't even need to celebrate these goals anymore. He's saving energy because he's banging in goals every few moments, Neil. This man is unstoppable. Kane Shepard. Hardenberg legend at this point. And his shooting boots on display this evening. Six of the best for the Burgers. And it's only the 58th minute. One could only manufacture this in fantasy for the Burgers. It's the second striker, Kane Shepard, with a near perfect hat trick. One on the head. One on his right foot. I think two on his right foot, but it's just truly magnificent. And we will see another change this we, time. He's going to have to stay out there and score with his left foot now as well, then, Neil. <laughs> I think that's what's going to have to happen. Double change coming up for St. Albans. Divin and Summerskill are the players to make way. And it looks like we're going to see Adam Hodor. And is it Carter Ramsey? Yes, Carter Ramsey, of course. Adam Hodor and Carter Ramsey, of course. Uh, Hodor formerly of... Avondale and George Cross. Carter Ramsey, a very good season in NPL too last year. Yeah, Adam Hodor having the year off, uh, having a break from football last year, doing some travelling and oh, here as well. He's not bad at playing the uh, the overball game as well. He might need to channel some of that aggression to <laughs> harass these Heidelberg United players in the next 30 minutes or so because they're running a mark at the moment. He's Hardjic. They're looking for an avenue to find their next goal, which would be their seventh. Yes, that's right, their seventh. I think this has uh, well and truly been an unexpected result in the NPL Victoria, but few could pick out Heidelberg United scoring just about every 10 minutes. Well, the scoreboard attendant's been working overtime tonight on that fantastic digital scoreboard at the southern end of the ground. The Score currently 6-0. Long way to go as well for the 10 men of St. Albans. This really could hurt their goal difference situation as well. Coming into this match with a negative two goal difference. Well, it's not going to look too pretty after this one, Neil. No, no, not at all. And uh, this puts uh, 
Heidelberg United into second place. Of course, contain the best goal difference in the MPL Victoria after this. After this result comes to a close, assuming that St. Albans don't get a few goals back. But well, it is that Misley defence that they've only conceded just the uh, four goals this season. It looked like not conceding again here tonight. His Shepherd again off the post. That would have been four for him. Oh, they don't come much closer than that. That would have been three goals in about five minutes, Neil. That is something else for Kane Shepherd, who's having a purple patch in the early stage of this second half. The earlier ball in from Marzis that he nodded home was right out of the top draw from the young winger who's having a fantastic game himself. And that one couldn't have been any closer either. Yeah, Kane Shepard also to remark seven goals in the league last season. Has already just halved that and, and then some in only just a few matches this season. So perhaps a, a golden boot charge for Kane Shepard who's playing in a deeper role. It's, it's really demonstrative of his playing qualities. He can do sitting in behind the striker's role, back to goal, playing and distributing to the likes of Josh Pint, but can also play up top when, he, when he's really required and speaks to his longevity as a footballer. He's, and, he's ticked over 30 as well. So and, and doing both roles in the same game again tonight, as we often see. Such a high-energy player, Pin, who coming back from injury as well. You don't want to take too many chances and probably a smart move from John Anastasiadis to give Pin 60 minutes. He's got his two goals. Let Shepard do that blocking work of the number nine for the rest of the match. And well, Adara looking towards Shepard in behind. He's Nicolaitis across the face, but a player to meet it was Adrian Zara, but it hits the side netting. It almost looked like it went in from this vantage point, but well, Harder United are attacking from all angles. The Apologies. Skipper coming back on into that right back position and nearly getting himself amongst the goals as well. Aaron Soros is going to be feeling left out that he hasn't <laughs> had an attempt on goal yet. And we'll see another change from St. Albans. Of course, they did make one at half time, so they've used up two substitution windows. Alan Herrera is heading off. And it looks like. Will it be a chance for the youngster Nicholas Morrie, perhaps, the 19 year old from South Shepherd? Yes, uh, the land of the GV Suns. There's a. Uh, It is indeed Nicholas Murray. No, uh, no relation to another famous uh, Murray, as far as I know. Damien. <laughs> well, I, I'm but plays in the same position, though, so, you know, they could be fooled. There's Marzis. Shongo. This ball forward, looking for Ramsey. It's well read by Feder Hajic, and Lesiotis can play forward to Adara, who's in acres of space. Uh, Nicholas Morrow, just his second involvement in the matchday squad for the St. Albans senior team this season. Leading goal scorer in the Bendigo Amateur Soccer League and best and fairest last season as well. So he's certainly got some runs on the board at a young age and it will be great to see him kick on and really do well at the higher level here in NPL Victoria. Tall order tonight though to get any supply at all going his way. Here's Nazari. Just trying to play out of his own penalty area. Runs into a wall of yellow shirts and wins himself the free kick. Which uh, he was glad to see that decision go his way because had the whistle not sounded there, he'd been in a spot of bother. Not much cover behind him. There's Ricky Bene. Village playing it long for Ramsey. Nikolaitis climbed over and won the header. In fact, it was Razumich that was the target. Aydara. There's Alice on the far side, combining with Zara. Zara coming on to replace uh, uh, Jamal Ali a short time ago. Lesiotis. We've got Olsen and Alice out there, the two fair-haired players. So we're trying to confuse those two for you. <laughs> Player ID is the key, as always. For our viewers at home to enjoy the match. Lessie Otis switching the play now. Ben Collins. You see a higher line from Heidelberg United as well. They just know they've got this game firmly in the their back pocket. But Carter Ramsey's going to race forward. And Adrian Zara bringing him down. And he'll go into the block. Of course, uh, Ben Collins with a slip. And the 
former Eastern Lion man with 13 goals in the league last season, was able to break free. Look like we will see a change as well. And Heidelberg United in just a few moments, looks like there'll be a triple change. And why not utilise all your substitutes? It's a foregone conclusion at this point. Opportunity for some youngsters to get some much needed minutes. Razovic. Leave enough for Vincent Chongo. Yeah, we will see a change indeed. Coming see off Nick Olsen. Yep. And on coming will be Dom Feller. Probably pretty disappointed not to get a go in the starting 11 tonight, Dom Feller. He started in that last match, the 0 0 against Avondale. Aiden Fedahajic. Also, Anthony Lesiotis making way. So, Kane Shepard still on the park. Well, he's going to play the full 90, I think, tonight, Neil. He's yeah, he, he must. I think he's utilized all, all the changes by the, already. By the end of proceedings. Yes, it's that kind of night. It's not often you see someone like Aiden Fedahajic substituted tactically or just to be rested. Yep, Anthony Theodoropoulos. Johnny Apostolopoulos as well. We'll slot in at centre back. Showing his versatility, come on and played it right back when Jamal Ali was injured in their last start. Certainly an easy player to identify. No confusing him. <laughs> Michael Gergic. Theodoropoulos pressing the man. Two number 12s doing battle briefly. Ramsey. That was a good first touch. Shongo is there on the right hand channel. Looking field. It will be dealt by Adrian Zara. Ellis. And break clear. Space for the Burgers to exploit. It's Dom Fallon briefly. Muzzes. Was the man who started proceedings this evening in the first few minutes of this contest. He's got a pivotal role on that left channel. So now we switch to the right hand channel. It's a uh, Challenge from Dynamo. He's looked to break free. Short for Zara. Looks towards that right channel. Nice there ball. is Sean Ellis. Players are there in the middle. He's looking towards the centre. Gurkic. He's head onto it. Here's Mori. Looking to get around Aydara. Aydara strong in the tackle. Came back off the St. Albans man and the throw goes the way of the Burgers. Approaching the 70th minute mark in this one. The fans finding voice again. Steve Curtin with you alongside me, Neil Simons, tonight. We hope you're enjoying all the action wherever you're tuning in. As we said, needless to say, if you're a Heidelberg fan, you're probably having a fantastic time. Just a big bowl of popcorn in front of you, lapping this one up. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's, it's been an absolute attacking display of such intensity. More so emphasised without the extra man for St. Albans. As Mazes looks to drive inside. A last-ditch clearance from Michael Gergic. And the Burgers oh, fans a finding a voice. in front of us there, Neil. Yelled out, go Messi, when Marza started that Maisie run there. He's nominally right-footed, Leo Marzas, but we'll, we'll let that slide with that comparison. I like it. The Heidelberg West Messi. <laughs> Nickname brewing, perhaps. Marzas on the set piece. It's fairly central, but looking to pick up the pieces is Ben Collins. Play it back towards Dom Feller. Slotted in in place of Josh Pitt in recent weeks, of course. Formerly a very St. Albans player, Dom Feller. Short towards Theodoropoulos. Looks across the face. Now Apostolopoulos. Adrian Zara. Feller. Going to play it down the line, and there will be. St. Albans goal kick. I'm not sure who Fellow was aiming for there. I couldn't see anyone down the line, but it runs it harmlessly out of play down there. The Southern Road. A bit of a lull over this one as we come to you live from Olympic Village in our broadcast position just in the grandstand amongst the spectators here who I'm sure you've heard through our effects, Mike. Adding plenty of atmosphere to the occasion tonight. Really healthy crowd in here. Fans, young and old. Of Heidelberg enjoying this one. Apostolopoulos fighting for this one in the air. Adara on the floor. 
Zara at full tilt. Shepard at the calm pace of a librarian just passing around the ball like he's putting books back in the fiction section. <laughs> it's a very apt comparison. He's very calm on the ball, Kane he has, he has, Despite playing in the final third, he has so much time on the ball, doesn't he? He's One. Monek in the long sleeves. Razumich. For options ahead of him. He couldn't see anyone, decided to take on a man and then ran out of options altogether. Marzis. His fella. It's all pretty static here in front of him, so he decides to try and switch the ball out to the right-hand side. Apostolopoulos. Zara getting forward from right back. This is Alice. Substitutes combining here. Good chance for John Anastasiadis to get some minutes into some of his players who aren't in the starting 11 at the moment. Plenty of healthy competition for uh, starting 11 spots as well. Plenty of depth in this squad that he's assembled this season. Especially with players like Adrian Zara coming back from injury. Sean Alice on the bench as well. Is this one played in for Shepard? Oh, blocked away. Shepard looking for yet another goal to add to his tally tonight. Zara gets there first. Well, the 10 man of St. Albans. Got so much work to do, and there's still 20 minutes to go. Playing time as well for them to fight through here. They want the game to be over now. Hodderberg want to keep playing for another hour or two. Marzis getting on the end of this ball over the top, playing it into the back post area. Shepard was lurking, partially away by Joey Monick. Here's Fuller. And Zara. And they're forced to come back to Adara. Shepard facing forward. No room for the shot. Zara gets to the byline and blasts this one across, and there was too much heat on it. Not quite the composure we expected for a player of his experience. But that will come with more match minutes. Good to see him back out there again. Adrian Zara. Well weighted ball towards the back stick from, from Adrian Zara. Established player within the system and of course continuing to revolutionise his game. As a right fullback has got the pace to deal plenty of blows to his opposing defenders. Ellis. Towards Fella, dropping fairly deep. This high line from Heidelberg. They want more. They know how important goal difference could be in the latter parts of the campaign. Nicoletis. It's back towards Ben Collins. Good shift from Theodoropoulos. Back to goal. Finds Idara. We'll have to wait a little bit to receive in forward. It's back with Idara on the edge of the area. The latest. Collins into feet. Theodoropoulos is brought to ground and will earn himself the free kick. It's a very dangerous position for Heidelberg United. Michael Gurgut scored from this very same spot last season for St. Albans against the Burgers. Can they fashion from this position? It'll be you know, Mazza standing over this one and Sean Ellis. There's no shortage of players who want to get involved. I think even Ben Collins wants to have a pop here, Neil. <laughs> Why not? Something to say. The central defender just going in to roast this one on goal a la Charlie Yankos all those years ago, perhaps. I think it will be the left foot of Sean Ellis who will look to whip one towards the back stick. Leo Marzis looks a bit disappointed that he's not <laughs> being able to whip this one around the wall on the, wa on the right foot. It's four in the wall for St. Albans. Sean Ellis now. Can he fashion a shooting chance or will he go for the assist route? He will go direct. Ellis! Up in the air from Marco Bullich and it will be a corner for the Burgers. I would have quite thought he would have gone for that opportunity, Sean Ellis. It's quite a tight angle. Very cute, of course, directed towards goal, but Michael Bull has dealt with it quite well. He's actually made quite a few saves despite conceding six. He goes short towards Muzzes. Can't find its way through. Oh, there was barely any time to watch that one on our replay screen before the corner kick was taken. Despite being 6-0 up, Heidelberg, they're, uh, they're just keen to keep the ball in play as much as they can and try and add to this scoreline. They're enjoying their football that much out there. Alice into Zara. A couple of goals from around the ground as well, Neil. Oakley Cannons have piled on the goals. 
Down at Jack Edwards, that earlier goal you mentioned by Joe Guest. Now Wellsmore and Valentini on the scoreline in the second half, so they lead 3-0 against the Port Melbourne Sharks, and it's still a 1-0 lead to Green Gully on the road. Mo Adam on the score sheet there for the Cavaliers on their trip down to Frank Hollihan, Dandenong City's ground. Here's Ben Collins. Nicolai is in space. He's enjoying playing against 10 players, that's for sure. Getting those bases in those wide areas as St. Albans trying to defend in a compact shape in the middle of the pitch, in the spine of the pitch. Here's Alice Apostolopoulos getting his chance to play his essential defender tonight off the bench. Pressure from Fowler. Onik makes the clearance. He sent that one forward to towards Carter Ramsey, but there was no chance of him getting on the end of it. Even the counter-attack system is looking pretty flat at the moment for St. Albans. Just want to remark about the attendance this evening. Contrasting fortunes comparing what we've witnessed tonight and also last season. I think is say north of the north of a. 500, 600, maybe you'd say there's a 1,000. It's very hard to tell. Let's round it up to a 1,000. Sure, why not? But I think it's hard to gauge the crowd figure in this. It's a very vast venue, very spread yeah, out. Absolutely. And I'm going to go for a 1,000. Yeah, sure. The point I was making was that they've really restored hope within this football club. I think that's sort of gone by the wayside in the last few seasons. They had a very good cup run last year, let's not forget, but within the league, they, they just need to find that extra little step to venture forth towards championship glory and John Anastasiadis is definitely the man to lead the charge and of course has implemented a very regimented training system they've trained four times a week during pre-season at some point as we do have a substitution here it looks like we'll see last actions from Zelfi Nazari I'm looking to make his way into the park might be Max King time I think Max King yes not to be mistaken with the uh, the AFL likeness but uh St. Albans' final change of the evening does see the introduction of Max King. High over the top. It's the ladies who contend with it fairly well. Maz is cutting in deep. Going to bypass several St. Albans attackers. Now it's Ben Collins. A short fella. Towards Apostolopoulos who travels. Zara. That right touch line. And a race forward, a strong challenge in possession. Theodoropoulos will bring it back into midfield. Ellis beating past several players. It's Sean Ellis! Oh my goodness gracious! What a goal that would have been. And this. <laughs> this cauldron has been brought to life once again. Sean Ellis has still got it. Crossbar is still rattling Neil after that effort. Absolutely so. Idara close to the byline. He's been brought to ground. Max Hangler not blowing his whistle just yet. Space for Zara to exploit, but the uh, St. Albans goal kick. Looking back on the replay, it looks as if it was a brief miscue from uh, <laughs> Sean Ellis. Still, ball still fell to his feet. That's from from long range. Why not? You're six 0 up. And wouldn't have that been one of the goals of the season? We've seen a couple in recent weeks. A couple from Amir Abdallah, uh, Derry Korf earlier in the week definitely provided some competition, but imagine if Sean Ellis was able to, to find the, the top right corner there. Well, it was summed up well by the gentleman behind you in the crowd uh, from our broadcast position to our right. He said, simply said, aye, aye, aye. Here's a chance for Mori. Oh, showed too much of it to Apostolopoulos. That would have been a chance for his first senior NPL Victoria goal boy from South Shep, Nicholas Mori. Harderberg just at a walking pace now, bringing the ball forward. The same thing, hello to everyone tuning in from regional Victoria, NPL Victoria. The club's currently based in the metro areas this season, but it would be good to see some regional representation in the competition and again. Here's Marzis. Good challenge by Shongo. Gergic is just going to have to just lump this one forward towards Carter Ramsey. Collins was always favoured to win the header. Oh, a bit of hang time there for Nikolaitis. Jumping up, up on the shoulders of Razumich. Like he was about to take a screamer. 
Hello to uh, one of our NPL commentators tuning in, watching three different screens tonight, Michael Thompson. Oh, we've got a chance here for Shepard. Opening up the ball again and passed in and not passed wide. Well, it should have been passed in by Sean Ellis, who almost scored a screamer and then seems to have just about missed a sitter. Sometimes the best players have their, have their missteps. Kane Shepard very unselfishly rolling it across to Sean Ellis. He should have fired home, but it's a real consolation. Was that point. one on a plate there, I reckon, Neil? <laughs> yeah, I'd say on a platter, to be certain. But, yeah, unfortunately for Sean Ellis, can't fire home. But Harderberg United still mounting on the chances, despite being six goals up. Poor giveaway by Marco Bullich from the, the goal kick as well. Straight out of play. I was mentioning regional Victoria as well just before. Hello to Joel tuning in tonight from East Geelong. He's enjoying seeing plenty of goals. But uh, our neutrals are hoping that there might have been some goals scored by the boys in blue. But they really haven't been able to fire a shot in anger since half time, since going down to 10 men just before the interval. Shepard looks to the left hand channel. There is Leo Mazes. That battle with Shongo has been tantalizing as he makes the bypass. Western Australian get again. It's Gergic. She looks to bat it clear. Now Fala. It's back towards Razumic. Tight space, but. We'll get it clear to Michael Gergic. Now Apostolopoulos, of course, arriving across from Norfolk City last season. Now Ramsey. Oh, ball didn't quite sit for him. Good run there from Ramsey. And Murray just couldn't pick him out. Zara. Zara. Shepard taking up a position on that right hand flank. To send in Theodoropoulos, but Bullich will claim. Going towards Michael Gugic. His uh, introduction to this fixture hasn't exactly stopped the goals. We need a set piece opportunity up the other end yeah. here for him to come in. Absolutely. So it really imposes influence well, on this contest. His, <laughs> one of his uh, Michael Gergic specials, direct free kicks. Yeah, 100%. Postolopoulos now, of course, is uh, former side Northwood City also in action this evening against George Cross in the VPL1. Zara. So I think one forward. It's Marzis. Michael, Michael Gergic has made a huge difference blocking some of those crosses. As we saw there again, not allowing Chef to get on the end of that ball. Dara short towards Ellis was the intended target, but back towards his feet and sends it towards Postolopoulos. Now Fella. Ellis asking for it on that right channel. He bypasses Marco and drive inside Sean Ellis. It's going to be overlapping. Adrian Zara rolls it across. Is Idara. And it's back with Idara still. Pandemonium in the penalty area, but St. Albans are able to get a clear and mount an attack of, them, of their own. Towards Carter Ramsey, just on halfway. Runners arriving for Dynamo. Leaves it for Murray briefly, but it's going to be a St. Albans throwing that's one. What can they generate from this position? Well, I think Murray enjoyed the chance to try and pick out Ramsey again. He did that time. They went the throw at least. Here's Hodor. Play the ball into the touch line and it goes out of play. Mori unable to reach it with the outstretched foot. Alice can just turn and let that one run ahead of him. Theodoropoulos trying to pick out Barzis. Only succeeded in picking out Nelson Shongo. He's got space ahead of him and he's got Razumic galloping down the touch line. Razumic and Nikolaides. Razumic comes inside onto the left. Well, it wasn't the right option in the end. The shot didn't really have the power to trouble Yaron Sosa. And that may be their first attempt on goal since half-time, Neil. The morale you'd expect would be quite low within the changing rooms after this contest. But St. Albans have, to their credit, still mounted a few counter-attacks. Of course, it's very hard to do so, not just when you're down 6-0, but down a player as well. And uh, I guess for Ryan McGuffey's men, there's a lot to really ponder about in their, dis in their defensive structure and how they approach matches against these uh, top six teams in the league. But that discussion 
for another time as the ball rolls out of play for a Heidelberg corner. Looks like Sean Ellis will uh, come towards that far corner flag adjacent to the uh, Suvlaki GR stand. That's right, just, uh, just under five minutes to go, plus stoppages here from Hay Night Football. Round eight of the competition. It's not been a uh, happy first of six consecutive away fixtures for St Albans. They, they are coming off a good win in the Cup against State League opponents, Geelong Rangers. They couldn't transfer it here, and that's off the line. Did that cross the line, perhaps? Right off the goal line by Marco Bulic. Well, they don't come much closer than that. I'm not sure if Max Hanlon, our match referee, has got the chip in the watch to tell him if that one did, in fact, cross the line. That technology might have to wait for another season at NPL Victoria level, Neil. But just have a look at that replay screen there. That wasn't far away. And it's a really, really good save looking at it on the replay by Marco Bulic. Chance at the other end. So is keeping busy. Hodor. Oh, ricocheted off his teammate, Mori. Adara picks up the ball. Well, a chance it just evaporated in the end for St. Albans on the counter-attack. Good to see them getting forward for the second time in the last few minutes. Yeah, this game really beginning to open up for St. Albans as well. Able to exploit the high press from Heidelberg United. Good to see them at least really calling Sozer into action there in that attempt as well, the 10-man off St. Albans. Absolutely. Ellis now in possession towards Adara. Apostolopoulos across to Ben Collins, formerly both of Northcote City. Uh, of course, uh, Collins was signed from Northcote City when he was at Western United in the A-League men competition. Adara. Berg is playing with a sort of a jogger's tempo in those middle regions of the pitch. Bala looks to flick one into the box. And for Marco Bulic, really been dealt a really tough hand. He's made about four or five fantastic saves this evening. And has still managed to concede six. So uh, I guess if he had a better defence in front of him, we could perceive Marco Bulic as an entirely different goalkeeper. It's an interesting proposition as well, Neil, with uh, Jasko Karanovic has been... You know, very reliable, very solid in goal, a good shot stopper. Seen him put in some tremendous performances, but also Marco Bulic has been yeah, really... Um, is it possible to say he's been really solid despite conceding six goals? It, it's strange to say, but I honestly have to agree with your assessment. I think Marco Bulic has performed diligently well. You, know, you don't see goalkeepers making saves off the line like that when you're down six goals. He, he certainly hasn't thrown any in his net. Perhaps that one on the tight angle in the first half from Josh Pinn, maybe... Hard to see from the ca our camera being on this side of the pitch, but perhaps that's an angle that he could have closed down better. It looked a bit frustrated at himself. Yeah. But otherwise, just some really good um, reflex saves tonight. And that one, as he's mentioned, pulling it right off the line to save it from going to uh, seven goals in arrears. Now Nicolaitis towards Collins. Happy to knock it around in this centre circle region. Zara now. A little pick off from Mori. Running in space. He's to his right, but run back by Fala. Towards Zara. Dara. In space for Ellis. A look left for Nicolaitis. Ben Collins. Entering the final minute of regulation time now. Tom Fella. Will Heidelberg seek a seventh? Well, a few fans head. already headed for the exit gates to beat the traffic here. That's when you know it's a big crowd, Neil, when there is, let's just say, around a thousand people here tonight. That there will be a bit of traffic getting out yeah. to Southern Road after this one as the fans make the exit out the uh, Catalina Street gates. It's now Dom Fella again. Postolopoulos. Berg is playing keep ball on this occasion. <laughs> Almost spent just a minute in the same position, just knocking in and around, around the halfway line. Poor giveaway towards Carter Ramsey. He might have a space to exploit. Carter Ramsey still travelling forward. Dan Collins with a timely interception. I just wonder if Carter Ramsey could have made, maybe taken on that shot super early, just with his first opportunity there. It was, uh, so as it had come a bit, a bit of a way out of his goal. Yeah, definitely uh, something for him to ponder. 
four minutes of out of time. Towards Mazes now. You see conservation of energy in the form of the, the tempo that they're dictating. Big few weeks again for the for the burgers coming up as Adara's brought down in the center circle. We well, might talk about their cup opponents they've got coming up as well. Heidelberg United drawing um, Brunswick Juventus uh, as a home fixture here. Yeah, uh, late, later this month. That should be a beauty. Bit of a throwback to, to the NSL days as Nostalgic. well. Nostalgic. Yeah. We might have to uh, put that one in our calendar. Absolutely so, of course. The Doherty Cup entering the next few rounds of its, its iteration. Rounds five and six being drawn this week. St. Albans drawn at home against uh, East Bentley. It might be played on the road, though, because I think... Uh, I'm assuming that this six-match away streak is due to the pitch being updated. It's Shepard towards Zara! But, yeah, East Bentley, very intriguingly uh, play, I think... You know a bit about East Bentley. They play next to MSAC, I'm, I'm fairly sure. Uh, and they're a State League 5 opposition, so they're playing a team that's eight divisions below. That is the definition, and epitomizes the magic of the cup. Uh, St. Albans playing on the, might, uh, on the mighty uh, surfaces of East Bentley. A GSAC, should I say, not MSAC. Uh, GSAC being in the Not to be confused. Yes, not to be confused with that. Well, we're, we're South Melbourne. For those uninitiated, GSAC, can you explain the location of GSAC? GSAC is more in that Bentley region, McKinnon-ish. Well, that uh, makes sense. That makes more sense. I was a bit course. surprised that uh, East Bentley would be playing around MSAC. <laughs> Well, that's Lakeside Stadium, where South Melbourne played their football, and of course themselves are taking on uh, the Dandong Thunder tomorrow evening at uh, George Andrews Reserve. Well, that should be one to keep an eye on that match tomorrow night. Let's look towards Carter Ramsey. And ben Collins draws the foul. The second opportunity in the top flight, Carter Ramsey. In the last three seasons has obviously played his trade with the Eastern Lions when they had that 2022 campaign as well. Relegated, however, but also spent time at Werribee City. It's towards Yaron Souza. Plenty of Heidelberg fans have seen enough. Are they looking to venture towards the exits? Not sure maybe that the tempo that the Burgers are playing with on the pitch, but you know what? The car park is packed to the rim. They're probably going to save face by uh, give themselves uh, some uh, more time to... I think some of those fans are trying to beat you into the bar for a Suvalaki you know, <laughs> so that uh, they don't get stuck in the big queue in there as well as opposed to... Or maybe some of the queues, <coughs> the queues in the car park as well. But it's going to be uh, pumping in the social rooms tonight yeah, for Heidelberg United because it feels like the glory days are back unbeaten this season uh, from eight league fixtures. In the cup last weekend. It's towards Zara now. Must be a final opportunity for the Burgers now. Theodoropoulos looking in behind, but it's well anticipated by Marco Bulic. Adrian Zara is possibly playing as the most advanced right back I've seen for a while. He's playing basically as a number 10 when they in possession, I think. He scored in this fixture last time they met at this ground last year in the 3 0 win. So he does like scoring against St. Albans. 3-0 last time wasn't enough. It's six tonight, just double your money. Yeah, Max Handler not looking to his uh, watch as of yet, but oh, he has a bit of a cheeky glance that time. He's having another look, and it will be a uh, plus 12 goal difference after eight games for Heidelberg United, the undefeated side, who made a statement tonight. A resounding six-goal win against the 10-man St. Albans. They scored three of those goals while it was still 11 v 11. And then another three in the second half as well. Leo Marzis opening the scoring inside three minutes. Kane Shepard with a fine hat-trick. Double for Josh Pinn as well for St. Albans. It just wasn't their night at all. And it was summed up when Scott Bacor was shown his second yellow in the latter stages of the first half. A spirited effort from them, but it just wasn't enough on the night. And right now, the rest of the top six in MPL Victoria are uh, looking over the shoulder at this Heidelberg United side, who right now on the live ladder, jumping to second place, Neil. 26 shots, 15 on wow. target. That is ridiculous. 
uh, for the level of tempo in which Heidelberg played in the last 20 minutes. They probably could have had 40 shots on goal, but a real testament to John Anastasiadis' tactical ambitions. So that's 10 saves to Marco Bullich, as we mentioned. There you go. We've got that ten stat. 10 saves in a 6 0 loss. It's outrageous. That's a lot of saves. Outrageous. Said, well, we, we talked about potential asterisks on the campaign. Of course, Josh Parrish uh, has, has brought that to the, to the fore. Uh, there's no asterisks needed this evening. A, a thunderous win for the Burgers, who will be singing their praises in the tactical uh, sessions this week. And they've got a good run of fixtures coming up as well. Now, you have a look. They're on the road next Friday night to play the Melbourne Knights. A good chance to get some points there. Then they're back here at home two weeks' time against Moreland City and then Hume City on the road the following week. There's no reason why they couldn't take uh, nine points from that on this form. As far as St Albans go, as we said, three away trips for them coming up. Another couple more after that. But an all uh, Western Suburbs clash with Altona Magic next Saturday night. They will be looking to restore some pride, I would imagine, uh, in that fixture, Neil, at Paisley Park. Yeah, absolutely so. A lot of soul-searching for the St Albans Saints have had a heavy, heavy defeat this evening. But... Lots to look forward to for either sides. And for Heidelberg United, this is a statement win, a state of intent. And uh, after, of course, three draws, they're back on the winner's list in the most emphatic way possible. It's been a pleasure to call this one with you, Stephen. As always, Neil. And big thanks to Sam behind the camera for giving us the best pictures at home. You've been sensational in uh, tricky conditions amongst the fans here in the grandstand. <laughs> But I'm sure everyone at home, particularly, as we mentioned, those Burgess fans have enjoyed it. But uh, on behalf of the broadcast team, myself, Steve Curtin, and Neil Simons signing off from Olympic Village, where the full-time the full score, Heidelberg United 6, St Albans, Neil, good evening.